you obviously have been following the conversation yes. and uh, yes. your prize, for example, is awarded annually to an individual or organization that best exemplifies the foundation's mission, namely to be a vital voice standing up for values of decency, dignity, freedom, and justice in every corner of the world. Do you, to the best of your knowledge, to the best of your ability, sincerely feel that this man, Paul Rousseff, Virginia, next to you, fits that bill, and why? Yes, we do. We feel that Paul is an incredibly vital voice, standing up, telling the world about the horrors of the genocide in Rwanda, and in his own life's experience, embodying what it means to take seriously the duty to be one's brothers and sisters' keepers. But I would like to respond, if I may, to some of the comments made by the distinguished professor earlier. Yes. Um, we know that Terry George, the man who produced Hotel Rwanda, did over a thousand interviews of people who had been at the hotel, who knew of the events contemporaneously. And these interviews, of which hundreds of hours still exist, corroborate the story that Paul has told of his role in helping to save those lives. And I must echo what Paul has just suggested, that it's more than a little curious that there is no suggestion, no criticism, no issues are raised that Paul is not a worthy representative of the very best instincts of Rwandans until the time that he begins to speak out critically about some of his concerns relative to the government. Now, you know, I must tell you, as you mentioned, we gave uh, the first Lantos Prize to His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Correct. pretty universally recognized as a man of peace and a man of reconciliation. And yet, two days ago, before I came down to Washington, I received a, dis a detailed letter from a group alleging all sorts of outrageous accusations against His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Now, we don't give credibility to every ridiculous and outrageous accusation that may come from who knows what funding against a man who becomes a target because he has dared to speak out critically. You know, there is a lot of good, and I want to say this very clearly, there is a lot of good that has been done by the government of Rwanda. Mm. President Paul Kagame has done some good in his country, and I acknowledge that and recognize that. For example? Well, you know, I think that obviously he has worked to bring stability to Rwanda. Rwanda has very impressive economic growth um, achievements uh, for that region. And um, there are many things that we can point to. I think that the international community has had high praise for President Kagame when it comes to the um, way in which uh, the government of Rwanda has administered international aid. Economic development. And economic development. So look, there's good stuff there. But there what is good stuff. Yeah, but, but if I may just finish the thought. Yeah. But I, as somebody who is devoted to standing up on issues of human rights and justice, right. have to respect greatly the guts that it takes for a guy like Paul, who could easily have just sat on his laurels. Everybody says, hero of Hotel Rwanda. He doesn't open his mouth. He doesn't criticize anything. And everybody just claps and sits down with a big smile on their face. But he cares about the future of Rwanda. He wants it to be peaceful. He doesn't want a volcano of, of tension to erupt there. And so he has had the guts to say, look, there are some things that aren't so good. We don't have free press. We don't have a vibrant political opposition. There's no political space that's being given to opposing points of view. And so, there has been some, some violence. And so these are things that also need to be said and talked about openly. So Katrina, how do you respond to Sam talking about development, talking about uh, uh, a lot of efforts that Kagame has put in Rwanda? Yes. How do you respond to Sam who will say that, wait a minute, even in a situation perhaps where you have attained some degree or measure of uh, prosperity mm -hmm. without freedom. That it is some form or another form of poverty. I agree. I can't respond. I can only agree with those sentiments. Those are my sentiments as somebody who fights for human rights. I think that the only sure foundation 
on which a stable and prosperous society can be built is a foundation of respect for human rights. And, you know, we have seen in recent years some of even Mr. Kagame's very close associates beginning to break with him. And sometimes... Are you in a position to name names? Oh, I, I think those names are known publicly and I don't want to hold myself out as an Africa expert. You and my distinguished friend to my right know far more than I do. But the point that I would make is that there can be a brittleness, there can be a fragility to a, a government or to a regime that may seem to be very successful and yet because the foundation is not based on respect for democracy, respect for a free press, respect mm -hmm. for a vibrant political opposition and freedom of speech, that is a fragile strength and it can break apart very quickly. So it is, you know, I think Paul's interest in a, in a truth and reconciliation process isn't about, you know, attacking one side or the other, but saying, let's gather together around a table. Mm -hmm. Let's talk through the issues that this wonderful country of ours has to deal with so we can have a firm foundation, well, not a foundation of sand. Thank you.